Hey everyone, Hermax here. This video is the first video of a series I'm going to produce in the coming days about switching from Windows to Linux. The idea is that you are a totally beginner, you want to learn about Linux, you want to have a system which is really performant and you don't want to go through any hassle. You just want to follow my guide and then enjoy your desktop environment and also enjoy gaming. This video series is for you. Are you ready? Let's go. Like always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. I did switch from Windows to Linux almost two years ago. And since then, I never came back to Windows ever. I would spend like 99% of my time on Linux and I'm doing a lot of things with my computer. I'm creating content, I'm playing video game, I'm using the office usual stuff. But I think it's really important for us to start with this statement that you can actually be productive, enjoy your time in video games on Linux without having a huge headache. It's really far away the time where Linux was an elitist uh, operating system and only the people who know could use it. Right now, I'm using uh, Garuda, which is an Arch operating system. I don't want to confuse you with that, but it's like kind of like an advanced toward expert uh, type of distribution. And I will never encourage anyone uh, to jump right into this type of distribution. And this is the actual purpose of this video. Most of the computers nowadays, they come delivered with Windows. Windows 7, Windows 8, now Windows 10, or the future Windows 11. This is what you have to deal with, Windows. And it's okay. The only issue is that Windows come with a lot of like perks you don't really need, to say the least, like Candy Crush Saga. And now you are in a position where you want to get rid of them and you just can't so the way you have to do that is to go on one of those wonderful like video not blaming any of these content creators like don't get me wrong but i'm blaming the fact that you have to do it and you have to watch one of those videos to learn how to make your computer actually run as fast as it should out of the box and let me tell you 1.6 million view 130,000 view almost 1 million views for this gentleman and it just keep adding up everybody wants their windows to run faster because let's face it it's it's trash let's face it windows is not what it used to be it's becoming more and more a tool for microsoft to get a lot of data without your consent and that's an issue my experience toward it is pretty simple about some hardware I want to have full control of it. I don't like Candy Crush Saga, so don't install it on my SSD. I don't want to spare any megabytes toward application I don't want, nor I don't need. Simple as that. The only issue is that you could get rid of all the application in Windows 10 and make your way through it. The bad news is that this Windows 10 is going to arrive like what we call the end of life. Most of the security that Microsoft is providing on a weekly or daily basis, they won't be available anymore because they don't want to support it. And most of the Windows license are going to get into a world really soon because the support is going to be done the 14th of October 2025, which means that most of the security update and everything are going to arrive to an end and your operating system will be out of date. So what are the alternatives? Well, you have Windows 11. You just need uh, to be connected to internet and have a Microsoft account to uh, install this piece of operating system on your hardware. Enjoy. More seriously, we know that this operating system is not the best when it comes to gaming. A lot of video have been pushed out there showing how this specific operating system is increasing the latency in video game decreasing the performance overall would you really want to go there that's your call i'm just here to show you there is an alternative and this alternative is linux 
So let's say you took your decision and now you want to move forward toward Linux. And you want to have someone like me teaching you how to go through without any hassle. My first recommendation will be to make sure that all the favorite video game you are intending to play on your personal computer are actually compatible with Linux. There is this website called ProtonDB. I'm going to put the link in the description below, which is going to give you a pretty accurate list of all the video games available on Steam which are compatible with Linux. By design, there is some games which will never be compatible with Linux. Out of my mind, a few ones. Fortnite, Call of Duty, Warzone 2, PUBG, and games like Valorant. If they have their own developed like in-house kernel anti-cheat, there is a high chance it, it will never work on Linux because the way the security of the operating system is built, it will never happen. There is no way that any member of the community lets those companies have access to the kernel for privacy reasons. And to be honest, on Windows, you should never do that too, because not only do you give access to everything, but the cheaters are still here. <laughs> so you are in a type of situation where you are in a lose-lose situation. But that's another issue. My point is like, if you are a competitive Valorant player, well, Linux is not for you. Stay on Windows, win, win your uh, competition on Windows. Maybe if you want to do something else, play other games, switch to Linux, have a second hard drive, enjoy it. But until then, you won't be able to compete to Linux. That's for sure. Now, can you compete in other games? Yes, you can. You can play Apex Legends, for example. I've been playing for almost like two years. And I'm telling you, the game runs better on Linux than on Windows. I can guarantee it. Now, another important point. There is some productive, creative application which are not compatible with Linux yet. You want to have an example? Let's talk about Adobe. If you are in the creative and design business, my opinion, you are not on Windows right now. You are already on Mac because you know what you are talking about. And everybody in this world is actually working on Mac. So I don't see you on Windows, but I don't see you in Linux either. Uh, they did a really great job, Apple, to uh, really focus on, on this part of the business. And there is a lot of other business that require a Mac. It's, it's just not for us now. Linux is not there. I don't think it will ever be. Maybe it will, but my point is that if you are in, in, this, in those circles, there is a high chance you, you, you don't need Linux. You need a Mac. Now the last point. We talk about the software, the gaming aspect of it. We need to talk about hardware. I'm going to try to be as short as possible because I could talk about that for days. But the idea is that some of those manufacturers that produce hardware for PC are just willing to develop the software for platforms like Apple, Apple, or Microsoft. Simple as that. They don't see a business opportunity for Linux, so they are not willing to develop uh, software which are compatible to Linux. What they could do to avoid that is open the firmware of their actual product, but the chance for them to do that it's super low because they have certainly like proprietary stuff they don't want to share with everyone. And that's the reason why like some of the hardware you might own uh, could be totally useless in Linux. I have an example here, like my stream deck. I own like two of those. I could use them with like special like trick and cheat kind of, but it will never be the Windows experience. And that's a shame. But that's just a shame. But I want you to be aware of it. If you are going that route, there is some of the hardware you might not be able to use, and you might not be able to use because of Linux. You are not able to use it because the manufacturer decided that the hardware they sell you will just be compatible with Windows or Mac. Super important. Don't put the blame on Linux. It's not a Linux fault. It's, it's a hardware manufacturer issue. So you will be certainly asking yourself, like, how do I know if my hardware is actually compatible or not? What I would say is the first thing is to try Linux 
and see if it works or not. But if you want to go that route, I would say there is a lot of forum where just by tapping some research on Google, you're going to be able to find the outcome. Can you use this piece of hardware? Yes or no. But I would say before going the Linux route and for not being disappointed, because you could be disappointed after watching this video, you know, there is so many tutorials showing you how to go the Linux way, but not telling you those parts, which are, in my opinion, the most important part. Try to figure it out every piece of hardware within your computer environment and check if it's actually compatible. So before we move on, I, I want to share my own experience with it because I think you're going to learn a lot from my experience because I own a lot of hardware in the content creation space, but I still was able to make it work. But there is some hardware which are like totally unusable. I hope this little introduction to the Linux world was not too rough for you. In the next video, I'm going to be debunking all the myths related to hardware and I would say like um, software about Linux. So don't forget to subscribe, give a like at the video if you learn anything, if you enjoy the content and see you in the next one.